first, you're the first, you're the alpha, maker of the earth. By your word, by your word, you created life out of the dirt. Because you hold the world inside of your hands, you can move mountains at your command. You hold the world inside of your hands, you can move mountains at your command. God of glory, you are wonderful, wonderful. Christ the mighty King of all the you, all the you, all the universe. You are holy, you are powerful, powerful. Lift our praises to the God of all, God of all, God of all the earth. God of all the earth. Lift our praises to the God of all, God of all, God of all the earth. All the sea, all the land shows your glory. Tells of who you are. It's the love, it's the love of the maker. Shaping who we are. Welcome home. 
Hey everyone, welcome to Church at Home. From us here and the rest of the team at Gateway Church, we really want to say welcome, especially if this is your first time tuning in. Yes, and speaking of first time, Jacob, it's your first time filming here. I am here, good to see you. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Not your first time on camera though. No. Uh, I have to say, Jacob is our resident smoothie man. <laughs> he, if you, if you haven't seen his videos on YouTube, please do yourself a favor and go to the active page. It's hilarious. My children are now genuinely so obsessed with it that they like bug me to watch the smoothie videos. And then when we make smoothies, they say, and now we dance and then they dance. <laughs> That's so, so good. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. And if it's your first time, we would love to know that you're here. So please introduce yourself in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. We'd love to meet you. And hey, it is a really difficult time at the moment for everyone in Melbourne and Victoria, mm -hmm. but we are here for you and we are with you. Um, we're, yeah, we're so glad that you're here because getting together in this way, worshiping, praying and hearing God's word, I know for me really does frame my week in a, a really positive way, Yeah, which is exactly what we're talking about at the moment on our series on the plus side. Uh, so stay tuned for the rest of the service because it's going to be really good. It sure is. And let's keep reaching out to each other in this time and keep checking on people in your worlds and, and just being the hands and feet of Jesus and loving on people. Um, and if you're usually a part of the Gateway family, why not use the comments section as like your virtual foyer, have your coffee and pretend to cheers with people and you know tag people you haven't seen in a while. If you're missing someone's faces, tag them in the comments, have a little chat. We want to see that all going on because we want to pretend that we're here <laughs> chatting in the foyer, don't yeah, we? hundred <laughs> percent. And let us know how you're going. It's, it is really rough out there. You are correct. It is rough in here as well. <laughs> when I say in here, I mean in my house. Yeah. <laughs> but we thought some little memes might cheer us up. So we Always. thought we'd, uh, we'd have a look at some of these ones that are out. Oh, yeah. um, I love this one because it is completely an accurate <laughs> depiction of my house at the moment. <laughs> Makes me <laughs> thankful that I don't have hundred kids running around my house. Yes, good job, good job. I have three and it still looks like that. <laughs> That's so good. Oh, this one's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is what I'm going to look like by the time my children go back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it has <laughs> aged me terribly. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that one, that one's definitely something that looks like me in the mornings of church. You would never do this, oh, right? Oh no, no, never. <laughs> I have to admit there have been two times that I've been uh, watching church from home in my bed and one time don't tell my life group that I watch life groups all dressed in the upper half and only in jocks in the bottom half that is the greatest I never moment. questioned it I wondered if anyone was actually doing the no pants church and you've done <laughs> it and I'm so happy <laughs> oh gosh now we do love to have a good laugh and it's a great way to stay on the plus side. Oh, yeah. Another great way to stay on the plus side is that we can actually encourage each other um, and send each other some love and positive words. And um, we've made that as easy as possible for you. You can fill out the encouragement form and yep. we will make sure we pass it on. Or you could send in a video shout out by messaging us on Facebook. Do you want to see, yes. do you want to see this week's shout out? I 100% want to see this Let's week's shout out. Let's have a look. Hey, I just want to give a massive encouragement to our youth team. They've just been so amazing during this time. Even though we can't physically see each other, they've still been there and created this fun and energetic side to Zoom meetings and Zoom games and Zoom trivia. It's been super awesome. I know that heaps of people have been getting involved. Um, our youth leaders have also been really encouraging us and checking in on us to make sure that we're not stressing the time and doing whatever they can to help. So thumbs up to youth, you youth team, you've been doing such an amazing job. Hey, how good was that? I love how this. How good is it? Seeing like friendly faces again that I would normally see around the foyer, but I still get to see them and still get to see them encouraging. Exactly. I love it. So yeah, let's give a shout out to that shout out in the comments. See what you did there. <laughs> But seriously, we, we do want this service to be super interactive for you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, something you don't just watch, but something we get to be involved in and, and talk to each other. So yeah, let's keep encouraging each other on those platforms. But also today is a great day to fill out a prayer form too. You know, every day is a great day to fill out the prayer form. Oh yeah. <laughs> but we know that there is a lot going on uh, in your worlds at the moment. And yeah. we believe in a good God who loves to hear the sound of our mm. voice. And he loves it when we bring our needs and our burdens and our joys to him. Yeah. So why not bring Bring whatever is going on in your mind or going on in your world before God this morning uh, by filling out the prayer form. We have an incredible team that would absolutely love to pray with you this week. And you yeah. can even request a call if you're feeling the need. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, how about we pray right now? I like it. For everybody watching and uh, what they're facing individually this week. Let's Sounds do it. Sounds good. Yeah, cool. Hey Jesus, we love you so much. Thank you that you're in our weeks. Thank you that you've planned for a blessed week for us. 
Um, yeah, we pray for everyone right now in Melbourne and Victoria and the rest of the world um, going through these, these trying times. Uh, yeah, we know that you're in it and we know that you're good and we trust you and we love you. Amen. Amen. Hey, Jacob, I don't know about you, but I've been feeling really tired just from doing nothing. Have you, yeah. Do you ever get that? I mean, oh, you're active, yeah. you so you probably need rest right. from getting rest. From getting, no, yeah. it's ridiculous. And I was talking about this with Josh the other night and he, uh, it just prompted me um, this verse and I just wanted to share it with everyone. Mm. And it says, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And it just mm. made me think about the church as a whole. You know, so many of us are, have been so involved um, by, you know, serving on a Sunday yeah. and, and so many of us are not able to do that at the moment. Yeah. And we may be coming weary in feeling like we're not doing anything. Yeah. But I just wanted to encourage you, church, that when you give and when you support this church financially, you are doing something. Yeah. You are still um, supporting the incredible work that this church is doing, both in this community and overseas with our brothers and sisters in Papua New Guinea. Mm. So do not grow weary. Do not feel like you're not having an impact because by the way that you give and the way that you support this church, yeah. you are having an incredible impact. You know, our, we're stuck to five kilometers yeah. radius at the moment. <laughs> but when we give our, our impact goes so much further than yeah, that radius. Really and you good. know, we're able to actually multiply yeah. the impact that we're having. So um, if yeah. you want to do so, you can give by the details provided church. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Ne next up, we've got Marcy. Yes. She's going to share on how our passion for God can keep us on the plus side. I like it. But first, we're going to worship. Yes. So let's get to our feet and get into it. Don't be awesome. like that guy on the couch in the meme. We're not going to be <laughs> those people, right? No sitting on the couch <laughs> with chips. We're going to stand up, we're going to put our hands up in the air, we're going to get into it. Done. Awesome. Welcome, church. Jump up, get your dancing shoes on, and join us in praise. I close my eyes and colors fly. There's no hiding from your grace. I can't deny your heart for mine. And it's unrelenting chase. I was on the edge of deception. Caught up in my own hesitation. Until your love took over.
so worthy of our praise. You are so holy. You are the firm rock, the foundation on which we stand, Lord God. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could
when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Good morning, everybody. Welcome again to church at home from our lounge room to your lounge room. What a week it's been, eh? We're in this uh, this on the plus side series at the moment and we've all been really hit for a bit of a blow. Seems to feel even more difficult to stay on the plus side, but I'm glad you're here today because uh, we want to encourage you. You know, I'm, uh, I'm determined to come out of this whole season with something really worthwhile. I want to be able to look back at this time and say, wow, I can't believe how God was able to make beautiful lemonade out of these lemons. So um, I'm wondering if, you, if you're talking about coming out with something worthwhile, what, what is ultimately worthwhile? And of course, I've got to say, what Jesus said, and that was to seek first the kingdom of God. And uh, he told this beautiful parable about um, a man who was digging in a field and he found a buried treasure and he realised the worth of that treasure. So he covered it up again, went off, sold everything that he had in the world so he had enough money to go back and, and buy that field so that he could get that treasure. And he was telling us that's how beautiful, that's how worthwhile the kingdom of God is. So I want to dedicate myself to not wasting this time. And I wonder whether you would join me in that. Because we can come out of this time more in love with Jesus and more invested in the kingdom. Uh, a friend of mine showed me a, a, a T-shirt that her gym has just put out and it's got across the front come back stronger. And I want that to be maybe the, the theme for Gateway for the next couple of weeks, that we can come back stronger. I wonder how your passion for God is going these days. Because I, I know I am at my most positive, I'm at my most on the plus side when my passion for God is really white hot. But it's, it's so easy to just roll out of the fire. And as you know, if a, if, a, if a hot coal rolls out of an open fire, it will just slowly um, lose its heat. So I want to share with you over the next couple of weeks a journey God's been taking me on. And uh, I, I can only share part of it today. But I started thinking about what it takes to stay positive in a difficult time. How, how do we keep our, how do we stay positive? How do we keep our passion for God hot? And what happens when we don't? You know, my story is I, I grew up in church. I grew up in a very loving Christian family. 
And I've, I've never experienced a time when I didn't believe in God, when I didn't believe in the church. You know, I'm, I'm not, a, not a perfect person by any stretch of the imagination, but I've, I've never lost that faith. You know, there have been times in my life where the Bunsen burner uh, of, of passion had to be sort of put back underneath my soul by God because I got slack, but, but I never lost that faith. But I've always been very curious as I have led a church for several decades and I've seen people who, who find God, who know God, who have a love for God, and then something happens and they walk away from it. And that, that sort of never made sense to me. I could never understand how that was possible. And, and then how is it possible to get that back? How is it possible to find your passion for God again? I've had the privilege over the last two weeks to talk to about a dozen amazing people who were prepared to tell me their stories. And I feel that God is showing me some profound things about how we, how we find faith how we lose it and how we get it back again and, uh, and how God never gives up on us, most importantly. What I've found is that people can, can lose their faith through horrific circumstances that would cause anybody to start to doubt the reality of a loving God. And I'm going to share some of those next week, so don't miss that. But there are others who have faith and they just slowly drift away. And I suspect that's, that's more common amongst uh, people in our community. So I want to talk today about keeping or maybe gaining a passion for God by avoiding spiritual drift. Now, the word, the word passion, there's a word that's similar to it, and that's the word enthusiasm. Enthusiasm comes from a Greek word, Enthuse, which means to be possessed by God. So I've, I have called my talk today the tale of two Daves. Now, the first Dave is in the Bible, in the Old Testament. You can read about him in um, the books of Samuel, 1 and 2 Samuel. And this Dave is King David. Now, many of you would know um, some of the stories of King David but one of my favourites was is a story of uh, the young David, when uh, he's he's up in a big battle against a giant named Goliath. Now the Israeli people they were sort of on one side of the valley, and the Philistines they were fighting were on the other side. And the Philistines had this massive champion, a huge man they called a giant, and his name was Goliath. And he would come out every day and just scream at the, Israel, at the Hebrew people saying, you know, why don't you send someone out to fight me? Uh, I'll, I'll just feed your bodies to the birds. And there was nobody on the Hebrew side who could take this man down, nobody who had the courage to until this young shepherd boy named David comes up and uh, he, he looks at Goliath and says, I'm not going to put up with that. He says in 1 Samuel 17, he says to him, you come against me with sword and spear, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. And uh, if you know the rest of the story, this young shepherd boy refuses to wear armour when, uh, when he goes out on the battlefield. He knows, he says that God will look after him and he just picks up his uh, slingshot shoots a, a stone at Goliath, hits him in the forehead and, and fells that giant. It's an incredible story. But you wonder where did that young boy get the courage from? Where did he get the passion to walk onto that battlefield with such courage? This was a boy who as a shepherd would spend hours and hours of time alone in the fields in the presence of his God. And we know that from the Psalms that he wrote. He wrote many of the, book, uh, the um, songs in the book of Psalms. He trusted God daily. He walked with God daily. He worshipped God daily. Can you pick the common word? This is the man who wrote Psalm 23. You know, we know these words, God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. 
You find me quiet pools to drink from and true to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. You know, David didn't just click on a computer screen once a week. This was a daily abiding. He was enthusiastic. He was passionate. He was possessed by God. But that's only the beginning of David's story. The surprising middle act of the story of King David is that he had it and he lost it. He had this passion for God and he lost it. When he became king, he was surrounded by power and wealth. And I can only believe that his daily time with God started to wither and he allowed his soul to just roll out of the fire. In the middle part of David's story, which is in um, the second book of Samuel, chapter 11, David hits rock bottom. At a time when all of his soldiers were away fighting and as the king of Israel, that's where he should have been as well, leading his men into battle. David was walking on the roof of the palace and saw something he shouldn't have seen, which was a beautiful woman. And he did something he shouldn't have done, which was force her to, to come to him. And even though the scriptures don't say it, given, given the position of women in those days as, as not having any say in what happened to them, um, this woman would have been raped by David. And then she was pregnant with his child and then David committed the next terrible sin, which was to murder her husband to cover up his sin. As a boy with enthusiasm for God, David runs into the battle to serve his God. As a king with apathy, David walked on the roof to serve his own comfort. How did someone with such enthusiasm for God lose it? Well, he did what we are all guilty of doing. He took his eyes off his calling and he put them onto his own comfort. Did you know that you're called by God? And you're not called to a comfortable, cushy life, which some would say is blessed by material things. It's to be called by God is a life of self-sacrifice and giving for the sake of others. It's a life of fighting for justice, even though it could affect your personal comfort and circumstances. And you are called to a deep, rich, intimate, adventurous life with God, but not to a comfortable life. We can have this passion and we can lose it. You know, during this COVID time, we can move in two directions. We can, we can move in the direction of leaning into God daily, of sensing his call on our, on our life, of of reading his word, of feeling his presence, of knowing that he is guiding our way in everything that we do. Or we can head in the, in the other direction. We can start to drift. And, you know, nobody drifts towards spiritual discipline and spiritual health. We actually drift towards, towards complacency and apathy and self-centered attitudes. You know, some, some have already even stopped connecting with church online. I know it's not the same. I know we all miss being together. But don't let that stop you connecting in the only way we have at our disposal at the moment. You know, I was thinking about um, my mum and dad at the moment are very elderly and they're in a nursing home. And um, my eldest brother has been living in London for two years. 
the connection with him is so very precious because, to be honest, they don't know how much time they have left. When my brother connects with them on Zoom, I remember the first time they tried, the connection was really bad and it was fuzzy and it was hard to hear. And I, I could never imagine my parents saying, oh, that was terrible, I couldn't hear properly or it's not the same as seeing him in person. So please, I don't want any more Zoom calls. Oh my goodness, it was quite the opposite. They didn't care how bad the connection was as long as they could see him and hear him again. That is the passion that I want our Gateway family to keep until we can see each other for real. Don't roll out of the fire. Don't start to lose your heat. Let me tell you about the second Dave. And this is um, our friend Dave Beer. For those of you who are Gateway people, a lot of you may know him. We're of, um, sharing a photograph now on the screen of of Dave and his family, which I've shared with his permission. But Dave was telling me that he connected with church as a kid and he started to come along to Gateway as a young adult, didn't come from a Christian home. But he found Jesus and uh, he started to get involved with the creative team. And I've got a photograph taken um, many years ago of Dave standing on stage at Elizabeth Murdoch College sharing with Rick um, to the whole church about his passion for Jesus and how much he loved to serve God and how much the church meant to him. I asked him to describe what his faith was like in those early days when he first found Jesus as a young man. And he said he loved the church, but his faith was shallow. It lacked substance. And he remembers that there were lots of opportunities on offer to take the discipleship journey into a bit more depth, but he was to quote, too pig-headed and proud. And then life got busy. He met Megan. Uh, they got married, started having kids, work was busy, and he admits that they just got out of the habit of coming to church. There were so many other things that they could be doing on a Sunday. They reconnected for a while with another church, but relational issues caused them great pain. So they walked away again from the church and uh, didn't return for several years. So Dave and Megan spent many years bringing up four beautiful boys, but in their honest moments, they knew that something of profound importance was missing. You know, drifting away from your faith is not a small thing in the eyes of God. In the first um, the early chapters of the book of Revelation, where God is talking about some of the, um, some of the end times we, we read about there. And he spends the first couple of chapters talking about um, things that God had against the churches at that time. And he says this about the church in, in uh, the city of Ephesus. He says, I see what you've done, your hard, hard work, your refusal to quit. I know you can't stomach evil. I know your persistence, your courage in my cause that they never wear out. Now, they're all good things. But then he goes on to say, but you walked away from your first love. Why? What's going on with you anyway? Do you have any idea how far you've fallen? Turn back. Recover your dear early love. No time to waste. Let me go back to the first Dave, King David. After these terrible events in his life, he was challenged by the prophet Nathan. And the result was that David fell into the most amazing repentance. And the Psalm, Psalm 51 is our classic model of, uh, of how a sincere and humble person repents. You'll know the words, create in me a clean heart, O God. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. And God answered that prayer. And the final chapters of David's life, although not perfect, David led his people well. 
and the Bible itself talks about him being a man after God's own heart. What about our second Dave, Dave Beer? You know, one of his kids ended up coming to youth at Gateway and he went home and he started to encourage his parents, saying to them, you, you need to get back to church. And David and Megan remembered how precious that time was to them when they were young. So with fear and trepidation, they walked back into Gateway. And here is where I get to brag on you, my church family, because he said all, all that they experienced was love and hugs and the most incredible warm welcome. And uh, they've been there ever since. Dave said he's changed. He once wanted knowledge so he could be proud of what he knew. It gave him ammunition to argue the case for God um, with his workmates, even though he'd turned his back on God's family. He called himself an opinionated person. That's not quite the noun he used. But now he's seeking wisdom, not just knowledge. And he can admit with humility what he doesn't know and is thirsty to learn. The final question I asked Dave was, how do you keep your passion for God alive now and whose responsibility is it? Let's let him answer that question in his own words. Yeah, I definitely see it as being uh, the responsibility of me and me only. It's, it's 100% on me um, to find a way to keep the uh, relationship between me and and Christ on track and in line um, for myself that includes you know church um, in whatever form we have church uh, it's about serving um, it's about um, giving not just what I have but who I am um, of giving my time it's about uh, joining a life group and being a part of a community to, to grow my, my faith. Um, and the best way to grow my faith is to grow my knowledge and, and, and keep talking and, and keep communicating, not just with the people around me who have uh, a, a grasp of, and knowledge, but also with, with Christ himself um, about building a relationship. Um, it's the same as being married. You, you, you can't, grow together if you're not living together. I want to give an encouragement to David Beer. I've watched him with his boys over many years. He was interrupted on the phone by his youngest boy while we were, um, we were chatting. And all I heard from Dave was tenderness and love for his boy. He treats his wife with honour and respect. He is not a perfect man by any stretch of the imagination, but these good things are some of the results of, of, you know, that we see in a man's life when he starts to walk daily with God, when his coal rolls back into the fire. He has asked God to restore to me the joy of my salvation and I'm so excited to see the future, what God is going to do through David and Megan. So how enthusiastic are you? How possessed are you by Jesus? Are you feeling his presence daily? Or do you feel you've rolled out of the fire and you're going cold? Can I say it is never, ever too late to return to your first love? I want you to try and remember right now, as you're sitting watching this, how did you feel when you first found Jesus? And now I just want, to, I just want you to imagine what your life would be like if God was not part of it. I wonder what your attitudes would be like now, your actions, your behaviours, your sense of positivity, where would it be? Maybe today is a good day to just sit for a while and consider that question. 
So I just want to finish by sharing a bit of a hack with you of how to relight your passion for God, how to how to um, be in his presence on a continuous basis. And or maybe this is new for you. Maybe this is something you could try. But it's something that's been helping me in the last couple of weeks. You know, in um, in medieval times, um, there were monks that would that would um, spend uh, their whole time, their whole life was dedicated to prayer and and staying connected with God. And there was a group of um, of monks who developed a technique or a practice called the daily examine. And what it was is that that several times during the day, and it was um, usually triggered by the chiming of a bell in their monastery, they would stop and there was a series of of thoughts or prayers they would go through to help them to stay connected with God. And uh, the main thing that uh, I know is that God loves to hear the sound of our voice. So I've, I've simplified it because I'm a simple person, but here's what I've done. And I, I would love some of you to maybe have a go at this and, and maybe even uh, let us know on Gateway Facebook how you're going with it. But it's quite easy. I love our smartphones because you can set an alarm. I've set an alarm for 12 midday and I've set it as a recurring alarm that goes off every day. And it's not a jarring sort of um, alarm that will, like you'd use to wake yourself up. It's, I've chosen um, a piece of music that I love. So at 12 o'clock, that just gently starts to play and it reminds me to stop. And here, it, here are the four things that, um, are, they're gonna be on the screen. And the, ti- and the titles of these are, Hey God, Thanks, How Am I Doing? and help. So here's what I mean. Hey God, just stop and say, God, I'm stopping for a moment just to be in your presence, to acknowledge that you're here right now. Then thanks. I just thank him for what's happened so far in the day. And that could be all the simple things that have happened, maybe some big things that have happened, but just just, um, pour out your gratitude to him. The third one is, how am I doing? We spend a couple of moments just examining our own heart and our soul. How how is my patience? How is my integrity? Um, How have I used my words? Um, How is my my thought life? And if there are things that you need to confess and ask forgiveness for, that's when you need to do it. And the last thing is help. Just, God, what's coming up? What do I need help with? Who are the people in my life who who desperately need you right now? So it's four simple things. Hey, God, thanks. How am I doing? Help. Now, I'm challenging myself to do this um, every day for the next six weeks. And by the way, I would do that again as I, I jump into bed at night. So twice a day, I'm going to be doing this daily examine. In six weeks, I know that this will become a habit that will stay in my life forever because I want to come back stronger. Next week, we're going to be sharing some stories, as I said, of people in our community who didn't drift away from God. They divorced him. There's some stories I want to share that um, I know are very powerful and will encourage you, so please don't miss it. How about we finish by praying? I want to pray first for people who feel that they've rolled out of the fire, that they feel like they've lost that first passion that they had for God. Father, for everybody who's hearing my voice right now who would who would put their hand up for that one to say, God, that's me. I have lost my passion. I've drifted. There's no one to blame but myself. But Lord, I want to feel that passion again. Father, I pray that you would would light 
that fire under their heart and their soul again, that you would fill them again with the Holy Spirit, that they would maybe even take their phones out now and set those alarms that every day they would be reminded to just stop to consider you, to thank you for everything that you are to them. Lord, I pray that just day by day that you would reignite that fire in them. And Lord, I want to pray for people who are hearing my voice now who have never ever said yes to you, who don't know what it's like to feel the warmth of, of being in the fire of your spirit. Lord, I just ask that today would be the day they, um, they ask you to, to come into their heart, that they would ask you to forgive them of, of the sin that's in their life and ask you to, to help them to make a new start. Lord God, we know that you love to hear the sound of our voice. And all you want to do is to gather us into the warmth of your embrace. Today, Lord, we dedicate ourselves to enthusiasm for your presence in our heart. Amen. Well, we'd love to hear. We'd love to hear from you whether you made that decision. You can connect with us uh, on Facebook. And if you're going to make the pledge to, to, to do this simple daily examine, then uh, I'd love to hear that uh, about that as well. Hope you have a great week. Oh, that was so beautiful, Marcy. So I love that challenge to set my alarm for midday each day mm. so that I can remember to check in with God. Yeah. You know, to even, if briefly, bring my focus intent intentionally back to Him. You know, with kids and all the crazy stuff going on yeah. at the moment, I could definitely do with that kind of structure. Yeah. I did actually have another idea. Instead of the midday thing, um, I could just pray every time my children complain and then I would be <laughs> so close to God. <laughs> well, I you can't pray all the time. No, I would pray all the time. <laughs> <laughs> love that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do love that. I do all those little things that we do each day, yeah. that, that, those are the things that do build a habit. So, yeah, yeah I, I love that idea of setting something that does happen to you all the time and making that the thing that sparks your prayer. Yeah, I, I really want to make sure that my awareness of God is like that. It's, it becomes like breathing rather than some daily task that I have to check off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I know for me, when I live out of that place with an awareness of His grace and His love, and when I'm in check with Him, mm -hmm. that I am a much more positive person and definitely a better mum. Uh, so we will definitely try and do that this yeah. week. Girls, you can hold me accountable to that one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know how you go. Hey, um, we would love to connect with you throughout this week. So make sure you follow us on socials and sign up for church news. You can hear about all the fun things that are going on. Mm -hmm. We've got weekly prayer sessions, there's life groups, all online. So make sure you get involved. Awesome. Yeah, and we want to see more of your lovely faces as well. We do. So keep sending in those shout out videos on Gateway Facebook page. Uh, message it to us. Just make sure that it's landscape. Good job. Yeah. This could be a big break. Woohoo, just like you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll see you all here next week on Sunday for 10 a.m. for Church at Home. Looking forward to it. See you then. See you then.